Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to work with a 486. We're going to clock it from 75 megahertz all the way up to 160 and we're going to test the memory performance, especially the timings or the wait states and what impact it has on the performance. And a big thank you to Electromind for sending us an assortment of SIM memory for this project. They actually have a huge selection of RAM. In the video description down below, find a few links for some uh, quite cheaply priced memory sticks. And there's also a 20% discount coupon that you can use. On the 486, we have two types of memory. We've got fast page mode or FPM RAM, and we've got EDO or extended data output memory. The motherboard we're using today is compatible with both types, but we're going to go with the fast page mode RAM. Now just a few words about memory speed. The typical speed ratings are 70 nanoseconds, 60 or 50 nanoseconds. Now I started off with the 70 nanoseconds. I was kind of hoping that I would run into issues that um, justifies getting faster memory, but the 70 nanosecond memory worked fine for me, even with bus speeds if, at 50 megahertz and the uh, fastest memory timings. So what I'm saying is that you don't need to pay a premium and get uh, the ultra fast 50 nanosecond memory. That might be uh, important for using it on a Pentium. So uh, 60 or 70 nanoseconds is what I recommend. And if the prices are equal, just go for the 60 nanoseconds and you've got a nice little buffer. And here we got our test setup. I will put the details below in the description. We've got a Biostar motherboard with PCI. The video card is a Zeng ET6000, a very fast graphics card. We've got 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache, but I will uh, spend some time later talking about that. We're using an SD card adapted to ID with an 8 gig SD card. Of course, the GoTek floppy emulator. If you're sick and tired of having unreliable floppy drives, get a GoTek floppy emulator. Uh, best investment, best $25, $30 uh, investment that you can do for a retro 486 machine. And yep, Corsair VS450 power supply and we have a little CPU cooler to keep our processor nice and cool. So we're going to start our journey with the processor running at 75 megahertz. Let's go into the BIOS and we take a closer look at some of the settings that we need to configure. Like in most of my videos, I usually load the defaults. There's not much difference between these two settings, so I went with the BIOS defaults. Because the focus is on memory performance and how it scales with the weight states and the front side bus speeds, we're going to turn off the external cache. If your motherboard doesn't have this option, you've got no other choice but to pull out the actual cache chips from the motherboard. But we don't have to do that. We can just toggle it through the bias. Okay, next up we go into the chipset feature setup and this is where we're gonna spend most of our time. First thing we do is turn off auto configuration and then I'm gonna lock in the clocks. The clock speed of the bus is 25 megahertz. So this determines how fast the PCI runs. It is set to one to one, so the PCI uh, bus will run at 25 megahertz as well. Here we can change the ISA bus clock. We're using the divider by three, so this will take the PCI clock, divided by three, which is 25 divided by three, gives us 8.3, which is perfect speed for the ISA bus. Apart from this, these are the two main settings that will change performance. The weight states, we can have three is the slowest and zero is the fastest and we can do that for reading and for writing. These two have to do with EDO, uh, EDO memory. We're using fast page mode memory so we can ignore them. And I had a go at trying some of these other options and I really could not measure a performance difference. So we leave all that other stuff at default. So basically, we will play around with uh, the weight states and we also will play around with the dividers to keep the PCI and the ISA bus clock speeds in check. And now we're going to start benchmarking. So I start off with the slowest setting, which is three weight states. Press exit. We're going to save the settings and we're going to boot into DOS. Here we go. This is the boot menu. If you want to download a copy of this boot menu, I'll put a link down below in the description. I will also put a link to uh, our website with all the benchmark results, the graphs, so you can um, properly study them if you like. 
So we're just going to go with extended memory and then we're going to run our DOS bench program. Also, if you want to download this, I'll put a link down below in the description. I'm only going to run three tests. The first one is 3D Bench version 1.0C. There are two versions. This is the one recommended for faster machines. It can go up to 999 frames per second. So here we go, we're getting 33.6. Let's exit out. And the next test I'm going to run is Chris's 3D benchmark. So for this one, we're getting 24.1 frames per second. We're going to exit out. And one more test I'm going to run is Doom. Just press B. And here we have the result, 3,376 real ticks. And to convert this into frames per second, you take 35 multiplied with 2,134 and then divide it with 3,376. And that will give you the figure in frames per second. Okay, once that's done, we're going to exit this and going to reboot and we go back into the BIOS. And I go back into the chipset features and I'll lower the wait states by one setting, save and rinse and repeat. And I do this for all the wait state options. So we have um, the tests for uh, 1, 1, 0, 0, 3, 3 and 2, 2. So yes, this will take me a while, but you get the short version of this project. And here are the first results. We're going to look at Doom, the other two benchmarks. The graphs look very similar and I will upload them all to our website, link down below in the description. So the game is Doom. Here we have the memory wait states, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1 and 0, 0. And here we got the frames per second. The settings, 25 megahertz for the bus with a 3x multiplier, giving us a 75 megahertz clock speed. And as we uh, reduce the wait states, we can see the performance goes up from 22, 24.4, 26.6 and 28.3. Okay, so now I've configured the motherboard for a 33 megahertz bus. We still have the CPU configured with a 3x multiplier. So the final clock speed is 100 megahertz. So we just got to have a look at the dividers now. We can leave the host clock over PCI clock at uh, 1 to 1 because the bus speed is 33 megahertz. So the PCI bus will run at 33 megahertz, which is exactly uh, per specifications. However, we have to change this. So 33, we got to divide this by 4 to get our 8.3 megahertz. But everything else is the same. So we just get out, save the settings, and we do all the benchmarks again. And here we're looking at the previous results at 25 megahertz, but also the new ones at 33. So everything is basically improved, but we still get the same scaling uh, in regards to the weight states. So the less weight states, the higher the performance. And here we have our machine running at 120 megahertz. So the bus speed is now 40 megahertz. We've got a 3x multiplier therefore 120 megahertz. So, and once again, we have to look at the dividers. So the 40 megahertz FSB doesn't give us uh, good numbers. It's either overclocking or underclocking the buses. So if we stick with the one to one, the PCI bus will be overclocked uh, at 40 megahertz. If we use the one over two thirds divider, we get 40 times two, 80 megahertz divided by three, around 27. So either we're underclocking or overclocking the PCI bus, uh, I tried this one overclocking slightly. It worked just fine. So, no, so we're going to go with that. And the ISA bus, the lowest we can use is uh, divided by 4. So 40 divided by 4 gives us 10 megahertz. So a slight overclock for the ISA bus. And here we're adding the results for 40 megahertz bus speed. Basically, the higher the bus speed, the higher the performance. And also the less weight states, the faster the machine will perform. And the final setting is the bus set to 50 megahertz with a 3x multiplier gives us a clock speed of 150 megahertz. And looking at the dividers, one by one doesn't cut it anymore. That is way too fast. So we have to go with the one over two thirds. So 50 megahertz multiplied by two gives us 100 megahertz. Divided by three gives us the perfect 33.3 megahertz for the PCI bus. And 33 megahertz divided by four gives us the 8.3 megahertz. So these are the optimal settings, no overclocking or underclocking of the ISA or the PCI bus. So that's actually a really good uh, setting, 50 megahertz, because you get nice round figures for the two uh, buses. 
And here we're adding the final results with the bus speed set to 50 megahertz. And a couple of things we can see here. We can see that the uh, performance improvement kind of gets less and less. There's a big jump from 25 to 33. Then it gets a little bit less going from 33 to 40 and even less from 40 to 50. We can also see um, what kind of machine it takes to run Doom smoothly. Doom has a capped frame rate at 35 FPS. The benchmark is uncapped and also runs at the uh, highest uh, quality with the uh, window size set to the maximum, so the most stressful settings. And basically, um, if you've got a 100 MHz 486, you're fine. That's basically uh, what it takes to run Doom maxed out with, full frame, with the full frame rate. And now the CPU multiplier is set to 4x. We've got a bus speed of 25 megahertz. So 25 megahertz times 4, and we're getting 100 megahertz. And here we've got the results with the 4x multiplier. We're starting off with the 25 megahertz frontside bus, 24.7, 27.8, 30.3, and 32.8. So not quite fast enough to max out Doom. Next up, we've got the processor running at the rated speed, 33 megahertz bus with a 4x multiplier, which gives us the rated 133 megahertz. And once we raise the front side bus to 33 megahertz, which gives us the 133 megahertz, which is the rated clock speed of the CPU, the performance makes a nice jump between 33.4 and 44.2. So there's a nice uh, improvement with the weight state. So uh, yeah, just like in all the other charts we looked at, uh, you wanna keep the weight states low, as low as possible to get the most out of your 486. And this is as high as I was able to get the processor. And I actually have four different chips. I wasn't able to achieve 200 megahertz. So 160 is the highest. So that means the bus speed is running at 40 megahertz with a 4x multiplier and once again we gotta change our dividers uh, 40 megahertz worked fine for me with the one to one divider and this is also fine the pci clock divided by four which will give us an isa bus speed of 10 megahertz so a slight overclock on the isa bus and here with the bus speed set to 40 megahertz, which gives us a clock speed of 160, we're getting uh, more performance out of our 486. Even with the uh, memory settings set to the slowest option, we still are able to max out Doom. And with the weight state set to zero, we're getting 53 FPS, which is a very good uh, result for Doom. And here we got all the results bunched together in one graph. I removed the data label so it's a bit easier to see. The uh, lines with the 4x multiplier uh, is the blue one here, uh, the orange one and the gray one. And really the only thing that stands out is that the slope of those lines is, is steeper than the other ones. But uh, otherwise, yep, all the usual applies. The higher the uh, bus speed and the less weight states we have, the higher the performance. And remember in the beginning how we turned off the level two cache? Well, here we got the result with the 256 kilobytes of level two cache turned on and the timing set to the fastest timings. So the performance improves from 53 to 56.2. So that's uh, maybe three, four, five percent of a boost. So it's a lot less than I expected it to be, to be honest. However, um, it does depend a little bit on the chipset. Uh, but if you have some information to share uh, with fast 486 machines uh, turning on and off the level to cache and what performance difference you get, do share your findings down below in the comment section, please. And there you have it, guys. So that was a lot of benchmarking condensed in a few charts. I haven't had the 486 running at 160 megahertz, so that was also interesting to me. And yeah, a lot of depends on the memory speed. So the lesson learned is going to the bias, uh, set those memory timings to the lowest setting. Even on a memory stick with 70 nanoseconds, you should be able to max out the memory performance. And also check out the performance with the level two cache, especially at the higher speeds. I found there's not much of a performance difference. So um, that might save you a few dollars if you try to hunt down some exotic 
uh, cache chips, maybe it's not even worth it, maybe your machine is uh, just needs a bit of bias tuning and will end up quite fast, but yeah. So let me know in the comments what do you think about this, about this project and that's it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.